here's something quite intriguing. This is a little uh, magnetic passive infrared light that you just, you know, it's one of these covered lights that when it detects you in the vicinity, it switches on. It runs from three AAA cells. And this was sent to me by Ian McGivney. And he said, I got three of these, but two of them are fine, but one of them just drains the batteries overnight. It just seems to eat the batteries. I thought that'd be quite interesting to open and see if there's any really major fault. Like I was expecting a splash of soda, wrong component. So here it is, and it's currently in standby drawing 11 milliamps. That's quite high for standby. It's normally, it would be closer to 11 microamps. So um, I was taking a look at the circuit board and there was nothing really obvious, you know, nothing really majorly wrong looking about it. So I thought, you know, at that power, it's not that high a power. What would happen if I took my thermal imaging camera and uh, just looked at it and to see if there was even a, a slight hint of warmth. And it turned out there wasn't just a slight hint of warmth. That, uh, if you consider that's uh, 4.5 volts, about 10 milliamps, it's 45 milliwatts. And it produced a very vivid uh, difference in intensity. Now, because I'm quite close with the thermal imaging camera, I can't use the, it's got the facility for overlaying, it's got a camera as well as a thermal imaging camera, so it can overlay a sort of, an edge detection and it makes it just that wee bit clearer but in this case the whole thing was just one colour because it was the rest of the circuit board was low energy and that was just high energy so I ended up having to take a probe and just point at it and then I take that picture. I should mention uh, this is a flurry four and I, I paid full price for this I, I bought this after watching a teardown of it a complete teardown by Mike of Mike's Electric Stuff. Not only that I was swithering just in the verge of buying it and then didn't Mike just go into the software and then it unleashed a can of worms on EEV blog and it was discovered that the only difference between the E4, E5, E6, whatever they're called, all the different models was that the, the features were rationed out uh, and there was a little file in the operating system that just basically had true or false statements and if they were changed it unlocked the features, including the resolution. I mean... As I bought this E4, it was really low, chunky, blocky resolution. Um, you do that small software change and suddenly it's the full resolution. Oh, that's so tacky. But um, as a result, uh, yes, it was a, a very worthy camera for a grand. It's been very useful. And in this case, it just went straight to the fault. Now, it's also worth noting that the temperature difference is enough that even if you can't justify getting the full-on thermal imaging camera yet, because the price of them is coming down dramatically, even with a cheapo eBay uh, thermocouple probe, yes, it's still 12 degrees centigrade in here. That's fine. That's positively summer temperatures for me. If you hold it on something like the chip, nothing really major. If you hold it on that little rogue component, which is a capacitor, then the temperature immediately rises. And, uh, you know, it's quite a vivid uh, change. So it's gone from 12 up to oops, 16 now. And that is the that is the faulty component. It's uh, it, it's marked 105, so that suggests it's a one microfarad ceramic uh, multi-layer capacitor. Now, the way ceramic multi-layer capacitors are made, uh, this is possibly d down to the fact that they've tried to make it too small for that size capacitor. I just happened to have this graphic handy because uh, I was actually working on a, a video uh, just doing the basics of electronic components, and this was the one for the ceramic multi-layer capacitor. And if you imagine the blue as being the ceramic, it's layers of ceramic and then conductive layers with uh, half of them, alternate layers, bridged to either side and then the lead coming off the end or a metallization end, as is the case in this. But to get a value of one microfarad, it's obviously been done very finely and somehow a contaminant has obviously got in and uh, created some sort of resistive effect on that ultra wafer thin ceramic layer. And as a result, it's passing, you know, quite a surprise amount of current. So um, let's uh, experimentally uh, remove that now. So I'm just going to turn the power off to that. Get the solder iron, tin it, and then just squish that component off. There's not going to be any subtlety to this. I'm not going to be using desoldering tweezers. Mainly because I don't have desoldering tweezers. I try and avoid surface mount wherever possible. So I'm just basically just going to slide it off, and this is this capacitor is across the positive and negative supply from the battery, um, and it's just for stability of operation. So let's see if I can 
flow solder onto both, there it goes. And now if I power this up again, it's not going to be as stable, it probably needs that capacitor across the power supply for stability. Initially the LED will light because it is, uh, it, it always lights and it powers up and it draws about 100 milliamps. It's pushing that quite hard, it's a standard 50-50 LED so it's putting about 30 milliamps through each of those um, LEDs but it, it only is lit for as long as you're, as you're in the vicinity. And when that now goes off, I would think that the current is going to drop down to a more acceptable level. And it, it'll take a wee while. There it goes. And now it's dropping down to the point that I'm going to have to turn the scale down. Scale down. It's drawing about 60 microamps now. That's somewhat different. That's much, much lower than what the 10 milliamps it was drawing. So it's going to get a much longer battery life now. But it is quite odd. Uh, I wonder what, what that would show up capacitance-wise. I wonder if there's a contaminant that's been on, got on underneath or it's just... You know, I wonder if it's during manufacture or it's just a dodgy component. I do know that these seem to cause problems, uh, particularly in timing circuits, these high-value um, multi-layer ceramic ones. Uh, let's uh, put this to two microfarads. Turn it on. and see if I can even make connection with this. It's so footry. Oh, blimey, that is just too... This is where one of those little tweezers with the built into the, the meter built in. Well, that's actually showing quite a high value, but that might be the fact purely that it's actually causing... It's actually leaking a lot of the test current because it is faulty. Maybe I should do a resistance test on it as well. So it's showing as 1.9 microfarad, but that's probably being skewed by that leakage. So let's say... 2K? Is it going to be a nice... Nope. That is just too footry. Oh, that is just impossible to to grip. No, it's a uh, very, very footry indeed. Uh, I'm not really getting much resistance now across that. I wonder if there's a contaminant on the circuit board underneath it or if it's a... Uh, or if the heat may actually have driven moisture out of it. I should have actually tried that. You know, I should have left it in situ and uh, tried that. But uh, going to have one more go at uh, I'm definitely getting a resistance there. This is just too hard to just catch between the tweezers, the tips of the, meat, the leads. No, it's, it's not showing a resistance. So I reckon that may actually have kind of like the heat of desoldering it may have actually got rid of some sort of moisture contamination inside it. So that's very odd. It's certainly it's way down to that it's still holding it at 60 microamps. So that's a that's a that's a good result. That I guess that's it fixed. Although I would say I'd have to put another capacitor in here for extra stability to make sure this uh, thing didn't keep self-triggering because there's a risk that uh, when the LED turns off after the time delay, the sudden transient uh, on the uh, power rail can actually re-trigger it again. But that gap yeah, was quite interesting, it was an interesting fault to find.